the next speaker for track two. So the topic is Accelerated Digital Transformation with DevSecOps. So it is an immense pleasure and pride to have on stage Mr. Samir Yaku from GitLab. Samir has been in this profession from 2000. Since then, he has worked with various organizations like Oracle, VMWare, Dell, National Australian Bank, and he has been working in several roles. And currently, he is with GitLab for four years, working as a senior alliances and channels APG solutions architect. And of course, GitLab is our sponsor, is a part of the engineering software industry, which is located in California, USA. So over to you, Samir. Awesome. Uh, can you hear me? I think. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Um, Samir, I have uh, good news and bad news for you. The uh, good news is I am sitting, I'm the last speaker before the lunch, and the bad news, I'm sitting between you and the lunch. So either you listen to me carefully, or I have to repeat my session again. It depends on how hungry you are. It's, it's your call, guys. Um, thank you very much for, for joining me today on, in this session. Um, tell me, who's, who's here from government organization? Awesome. Tilco. Finance. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Finance. I think, I think you all, from all different organizations, agree with me that digital transformation is not an optional thing. It's not a luxury, right? It's something we have to do, right? It, it really it doesn't... The business or decision makers, they really don't care how difficult it is. It is something we have to do. The problem with the digital transformation is everyone, every organization today, regardless of the industry, they want you to be the best software delivery company. I, 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 honestly, that was, it was not the case 10, 15 years ago. Like government was government, telco was telco, and IT was a separate thing. Now, if we all are turning into IT development or software development, and everyone one wants to do more, like as they say yesterday, more with less, with less money. More control, less risk, with less money. Cool. So to do that, organizations have been adding automation tools. You want me to deliver more? OK, cool. I will add as an IT, I will add automation tools to cover to cover different aspects, different delivery, software delivery to do this digital transformation thing. I will add tools for source code management. I will add tools for automation, integration, security, scanning, monitoring. Absolutely, there is nothing wrong with that, right? We were adding in the last 20, 23 years, we have been adding tools, IT organizations, IT experts have been adding tools to, to cover these needs. That was great. But the problem is adding these tools. These tools themselves have become themselves have become the sort of the challenge for the IT. They were introduced to solve a problem, to make the digital transformation faster. But that meant for product managers that more I'm adding more handoffs between different teams from planning into development into scanning, into security, into testing, into monitoring, and so on and so forth. For developers, developers are developers. They are the smart people who do the development. Now we are asking them to figure out security and fix it. I was like, what? Like, yeah, you have this injection thing happening in your code, go fix it. I'm a developer. I used to be a developer 23 years ago, and never nobody asked me to fix a security. Today, I'm asking the security team to do that. Now, and especially after the COVID, thanks to the COVID, this hybrid model has added even more challenges to the digital transformation. I have team members who work from home. I'm, I'm lucky enough to work from home full time. I'm not sure about my wife, but in general, I'm lucky enough. But the point is, I'm adding more challenges. Automation itself, vertical automation tools, each tool was doing its job. But if you look at the overall cycle, there are new challenges have been introduced. You know what? 
if you want to quantify these challenges. This is a study done with, uh, through University of California, a very interesting study. They were trying to quantify the cost of context switching. How much does it cost you in terms to go to get back? Overall, it was almost 30 minutes to refocus on what you were doing. A very, very interesting study. They are not talking about IT. They're talking about, uh, in general, how much does it cost you to do context switching? If you don't believe me, just remember when your kid knocks on your door as you are working at home and to refocus on what you were doing. Now, imagine this cost, multiply it by the number of developers you have, a number of time, and number of tools you have to switch between. And you can get a sense of how expensive it is to do this context switching. The other thing, the other challenge, or the other aspect of the challenge, not only on humans, but also on the integration part. Yes, you are adding these vertical tools. That's awesome. That's great. Who's managing them? Who's managing the glowing or the integration part? Who's keeping things running? You know how many times I visited a customer and they are like, uh, running like a, a tool, four or five versions old, just because it's working? Don't touch it. It's, it's, it is working. I don't want to touch these adapters. It's not my problem today. At least I don't want it. I don't want to be me who's changing it. I'm opening a can here. I don't want to go there. So the tools themselves themselves may not problem. Like I'm not saying they are bad at all. But managing the integration and getting the visibility across these tools is something totally different. Tell you something. In a survey we did in a study we did with not only customers, prospects, IT, IT experts across different industries like your good selves. They report, most of them reported that yes, we are planning and considering to do tools DevOps consolidation by next year. This is on the top priority for us. Nobody wants to spend time keeping lights on. Nobody wants to spend time context switching between these, these different tools. And this is where when, when they do the transformation, there are four, four goals here, my friends. One of them is make developers do faster, more productivity. Basically, I want to minimize this context switching for, the, for my developers. The second one, which is something I have been seeing more and more recently, is gaining more visibility and measure productivity. I'll tell you something. Many times when you, when in, in meetings, when we ask, how are you doing with your software development? The question, many, uh, the answer, it's common. At, yeah, we are doing well, or fast, or, or not as good as last year. Relative question. Usually, the main reason for these relative answers, because there is no measurement, there is no visibility. So I want to, today, no, I, it's not enough that I'm automating my digital transformation. I want to have visibility across that. The third one is, I'm sure you agree with me on this one, nobody wants to show up on the news next day. And in the last two years especially, I am sure you have heard how many incidents of big organizations. And look, no, none of the industries are safe. Telco, finance, government, all of them, right? I'm from Australia, and I've been, I've seen so many times. Um, they deliver more with, with far less risk. I'll tell you something. It's literally like driving a racing car. The, the, the more powerful the car is, the more security they have inside, the more uh, controls they have inside, because they don't want to crash. And if they do, they want to go out with the minimum impacts. And of course, accelerated cloud migration. I, I, I'm sure you agree with me that, yes, we do, we do run, but everyone is interested to fully or at least partially utilize the cloud. So I want to go there fast. I want, and I want to, my digital transformation to make use of this new 
it's not so new now. The, all the new services are coming from the cloud. Now, this is where the need for an integrated DevSecOps platform come, come in the picture. An end-to-end -end platform that can enable or minimize, if not totally eliminating, the context switching for my developers. It can give me the flexibility or visibility across the whole DevSecOps lifecycle and have controls on my code security. And this is, if you ask me what GitLab value is, this is what GitLab is bringing to the, to the table. GitLab today is the only DevSecOps platform that is AI powered, and I'll show you that in a second, that covers the whole end-to-end -end life cycle, DevSecOps life cycle, all the way from planning to deployment, including agile project and pro portfolio and project management, including software development, including security, with AI capabilities across the cycle and all the way to the, to the deployment and being a cloud agnostic. We don't, we don't push it. Actually, cloud and platform agnostic. Now, a very important disclaimer here. Does that mean that in order to adopt GitLab, I have to rip and replace all what I have? Absolutely no. We do respect highly customers' choices. I have certain project management or portfolio management tool I wanna use. Cool, we do integrate with that. I have certain security tool I wanna, I wanna uh, use. The, most of them, if not all of the tools available today in the market uh, do integrate with, with GitLab. But if the question is, do I need external tools to use GitLab or to build a DevSecOps platform with, along with GitLab? The answer is no as well. Using GitLab alone can give me the whole DevSecOps platform, but again, if you are using external or other tools to cover certain parts, it's your call. But remember, the more you consolidate, the better ROI you are, you are getting out of GitLab. Now, this is what I mean by when I say an integrated DevSecOps for my digital transformation journey. Any digital transformation starts from planning. In GitLab, I can do, uh, people from Agile background would know that even better than you. I can do epics, pro, uh, uh, tickets or issues, if you like. I can assign them to a roadmap. I can set them milestones. I can add people to collaborate to them. Once, once my planning is done and ready, I don't have to context switch to another tool. My developer can come and pick from the same platform, pick that, and create for me a branch, or if you like, the copy of code, and start working on that. Still, whoever done the planning can, can see, has a visibility down to the line of code on what has been written to his ticket. There is no, no two screens, let's say, opened here. And as the developer is working and developing, He's adding more code security from which is integrated in GitLab, and I'll show you all the security scans in a second. Already running on his branch of code. He's making changes and he's getting inputs for that or feedback on security immediately. And security can add security people to review my change before it is being merged. The master branch or the main copy of the branch is always deployable to production. A visibility end to end on analytics along integration with all the cloud providers. This is what I mean by an integrated end-to-end -end DevSecOps platform. Now, having the right information is one thing, and having the right information at the right time, trust me, it is totally different thing. Anyone can create analytics, anyone can create dashboarding, and there is nothing wrong with that, but sometimes, it is all about when I'm getting the report. And if you don't believe me, remember last time you get a security, security or vulnerability report when it is just two days before the production day, going live. You've already, already committed. Good luck getting the, the developer in, in the room and good luck making him remember what he has changed for that, for that thing. In GitLab, and because it is an integrated platform, we provide insights and analytics end to end. Today, my friends, today DevOps industry is mature enough to a point there are industry standards, regardless of the tool, it's not GitLab. Industry standards when you want to measure uh, 
uh, your DevOps journey. I'm not sure if you hear of Dora or DevOps Research and Assessment. It's a third party currently owned by Google, but started as a standalone, and they are still running as a standalone community. And I think they are the longest running survey in the market. Simply asking thousands of organizations who have done DevOps, how are you doing? What are you measuring? What are the three, the main matrices you need to measure in order to get DevOps properly? And they come up with four, and recently they added the five item. How many times you go to production? Deploy to production. How long does it take you to go from a, something has been merged or accepted until it is deployed to production, which is the lead time? How long does it take for, to restore from a failure? Time to restore. And how long does it take you to do a change, a change management? or change your failure rate. How many times you deploy to production? Yeah, we deploy 100 times a day. Excellent. How many times you get broken environment? Yeah, 100 times a day. Oh, you're not doing really something. <laughs> what is your change failure rate? These analytics, we take them very serious in GitLab, and we are uniquely can provide them inside the DevSecOps platform, because simply it's one, one integrated platform, end to end. These are not the only analytics. We provide value stream um, assessment or value stream analytics as an end-to-end. -end. We enable customers to highlight and find out what is the weakest link in the integration. So the idea here is we provide analytics for security, for operations, for executives, and for DORA matrices, the industry standards DevOps as an embedded without the need for an external tool to do that. Now, if you want to accelerate your digital transformation and your, make your developers happier and more productive, guess what? They are only spending around 40% of their time doing actual development. So if your only focus in AI is only, only on code generation, you are just enhancing 40% of, 40 of their, the work they are doing. 60% of the time, they are trying to understand what's happening around us. What's, what's the code we are changing? What's, what is this ticket? Okay, you know what? Just remember last time you got a, picked a ticket as a developer or someone in your team picked a ticket and he was going through all the comments on that ticket, just trying to understand what is required in this ticket. I hate that, honestly, I do, I do hate that. I do, and I know that most of the develop, we hate two things in development, reading other people and documenting things. Like, Honestly, like, let's be honest, right? So that's why in, in, in GitLab, when we adopted AI, we took it more of a holistic review. In GitLab AI, it's an, an, an integrated capability of AI, not only code generation. We provide code generation, but it's not only code generation. It's an integrated AI capabilities across the life cycle of the DevSecOps Guess what? Taking the privacy very extremely serious. We don't, remember this statement, we don't use your code to train our model. This is a commitment we make in, in GitLab. That's why when people use GitLab AI or code generation or AI capabilities, they are sure that their code was not going anywhere. And if you, if you want to, to get more of how risky is that, just Google on how, how AI uh, or code, uh, code leakage uh, because of AI. You will get so many interesting results there. When I say integrated AI capability, things like development, de software developers enablement, code generation, AI-based code generation, suggested uh, sorry, suggested reviewers based on your changes and our knowledge of your code, we can suggest who, is, who can be the reviewer. Summarize merge request of, or, or if you like to call them pull request, summarize for me the changes. For security, or security slash developers, explain for me the vulnerability. Tell me how, what is this vulnerability in an English way. Tell me in, in a readable way. Explain the vulnerability. Suggest for me test cases. This is all in the AI. For everyone else, 
as I'm reading through the issue or the ticket, summarize for me the ticket. Read, Mr. AI, can you please come read through all the comments and give me the summary of what people are doing. And once I'm done with my changes, I'm reviewing your code. I'm going line by line. And, and GitLab, in GitLab, yes, you can go line by line, code review. I'm reviewing your code. Can you please summarize my reviews to the developer? Tick, it is summarized. So AI here is not only code suggestions. We do provide that, but it is not the only capability. And this is why in a recently, uh, uh, actually newly introduced magic quadrant from uh, Gartner, GitLab has been named as the leader for the integrated, uh, for the software development, uh, 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 for the DevOps platforms. Not only them. In Forrester, we are the only leader in integrated software development platform. The only one, not only the leader, the only leader. Simply because of the, our, com our completeness of, of vision, ability to execute. We release a new, a new GitLab release every and e on every and each month on 22nd of the month. It depends of, of course, the time, time zone between here and the US. Every month, we never missed a beat for the last, I think, almost 10 years. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead. Let's go one, one, level, one level below, maybe. If you are talking about software development, and automation, I need to trust my CI CD, right? Or pipelines. This is the typical software development cycle or CI CD cycle. I plan, I develop, I deploy, I test, and change, right? Now, most of the time, especially for security, the changes or the tests happen late in the process, right? Not because developers, they don't want to test. It's, it's part of that, let's be honest, it's part of that but simply because it is costly and expensive, money-wise and effort-wise to run the, the challenge. Many tools, they do charge per security scan, per hit. This is why it's a little bit, it's a little bit different in GitLab. First of all, we provide security tools and we don't charge per, per hit, definitely. Actually, we encourage to have security scanning run per change. On the developer branch, not only, not only on, the, uh, on the main branch, on the developer change. And when we say security, we provide all of these secu different security tools. Container scanning, dependency scanning, static uh, security scanning, dynamic security scanning, license scanning, secret detection, you name it. But my friends, as I said before, getting, running the, the thing is one thing, and taking action on it is another. In GitLab, we answer three main questions, and please remember them. What are you scanning? When are you scanning? And what are you doing with the scanning outcome? This is what we are scanning. In the previous slide here, I showed you when are we scanning. We scanning that on each and every change. And then the, lift, the last question is, what are you doing with your scanning? And this is where scanning security policies I can build actions to be dynamically triggered on my code or my uh, development cycle based on the scanning result. In, in other words, I have my security expert sitting in his room. I, whenever a developer generates a high or a critical vulnerability, the tool immediately, dynamically can call him, get him in the, in the, in the loop for approval for his extra eye to review the change. Running the scanning is one thing, and to do actions on the scanning embedded within dynamic, within the DevOps is, is another, another thing. This is why customers have been able to achieve the uh, 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 ROI out of GitLab within less than six months. And here I'm talking about the highest subscription of GitLab, the GitLab, GitLab Ultimate. And there is no magic, really, here. We are eliminating the context switching. There is no 30-minute context, switch, context switching, at least. We are putting security first, and we are, we are giving uh, enablement for, for developers and the overall users through, through AI. 
So if you ask me why customers choose or use GitLab, I can summarize that in four simple answers. Make developers, I think you, we all agree, make developers' life more productive. Make their life easier. They, have already, they already have their own challenges, so let's help, help them. Dunalim have managed to increase deployment cycle by seven and a half times. Imagine when you, when you go seven and a half times more productive using GitLab. Measuring productivity, my friends, I can do planning, I can do CICD, I can do security, I, I can do all of these using different tools. But I, it's all about having this, uh, an end-to-end -end insight. Airbus has managed to release features 144 times faster. These are all public stories, by the way, referenceable customers, and we are happy to connect you with them. Secure software chain. Healthy increase their security checks by 400%. I can, I can do that easily. Simply using the security policies, I can set rules that security has to be embedded and has to run on each and every change on certain branches or any branches without even asking the developer for his permission. That's why I can, yes, I can do 400%. And accelerate the migration to the cloud. Supra Stereo, which is a big, large consulting company, they have more than 10,000 users working on GitLab, uh, collaborating on GitLab across the software development lifecycle. More than 30 million users are using GitLab as of today. And I think now the number is even, even more. And the top 50% uh, of the top fortune, fortune or 100 fortune companies. But why GitLab? There are other tools. Why GitLab? First of all, it's the only, honestly, it is the only DevSecOps integrated platform. And it is the only open core platform, by the way. We have, we have our own developers, but we, there is a huge community in the market for, for who are working on get the GitLab core. It's a flexible. It's your call. What do you want to, how do you want to adopt self-managed, which is on your data center or on your cloud environment, SaaS, which is ours, or dedicated, which is a hybrid model. I can get you your instance, but managed by GitLab. It's the same code, and we do the same support for them. Cloud agnostic, quick thing, imagine this. If you have, and most of the customers I have worked with have that, if you have multi-cloud strategy, then GitLab is the only solution because I can run my CICD jobs across all the main cloud providers concurrently. I think I'll just conclude with this slide here, last one. I think today, if you ask me about the next step, we are more than happy to come and meet you where you are today in your development Dev, uh, DevSecOps life cycle. Our team, local team in Singapore and across Asia Pacific, are more than happy to come and give a free consultation workshop, value stream assessment, and help you understand where you are today, where you want to be in the future, and build a roadmap for that adoption. I, will, I would conclude with this, and uh, yep, thank you very much for listening.